Hi, I'm Sanjeev Majumdar. I'm one of the plastics and hand consultants at uh, Pindafields Hospital in Wakefield. And I thought we'd discuss Decurvin's tenosynovitis. Let's start with the name. The correct name is actually Decurvin's stenosing tenovaginitis. And we come back to why the correctness of the name is important in realizing what we're dealing with. What do patients complain of? Well, they complain of pain in the base of the thumb area and the base of the thumb area pain most commonly is osteoarthritis but less commonly people can get something called decurvins and what happens essentially is pain over the first dorsal compartment remember there's the extensor retinaculum that sits over all the extensor tendons here and there's six compartments that the nine tendons um, run through now in the first compartment you have two tendons you have the extensor pollicis brevis and you have the abductor pollicis longus. And as it runs through that little tunnel, that compartment, the first dorsal compartment, it glides nicely. Well. In the equivalence, you get a stenosis. So you get a stenosis, meaning you get a narrowing of the compartment, thus the word stenosing. And you get a tenovaginitis, which is you get an inflammation around the tendon and also the sheath because the vagina is a sheath and the tenovaginitis refers to the sheath rather than the tendon itself. And when you have gliding back and forth, if you have the stenosis and the inflammation, you get pain. The third thing, much more uncommonly that can cause pain in that area is something called intersection syndrome. And we'll, we'll park that and you can, we'll talk about that another day. Now. When people come uh, complaining of pain in this area, you have to try to rule out other um, problems and zone in on the decurvins. And to do that, we have something called a provocative test. And there's a man called Finkelstein who described a test where you hold the thumb, sharply ulna deviate the thumb and the wrist, and people should complain of pain and it can be quite excruciating pain in the aforementioned area on the base of the thumb going on to the radial aspect of the forearm. Little warning, before you do it, please tell the patient that it's going to hurt because it does hurt quite a bit and do it slowly and they start to get pain, stop. Don't be a massive um, sadist. On the note of Finkelstein's test, you need to know that Finkelstein's test has been misinterpreted and a gentleman called Eikhoff wrote a variation of the test where you take the thumb, clasp it in the fingers, and then you ulna deviate the wrist. And the problem with that is that that maneuver can actually cause false positive, meaning you can have pain when there is no decurvins, and as such is not a good test to do. So just going back through Finkelstein's, you hold the thumb, pull it gently, and then sharply ulna deviate the thumb, and the wrist so and that elicits pain of course this is in conjunction with other things that you can see in the area which is swelling um, and tenderness over the first dorsal compartment how do you treat the curvins? well the way to treat the curvins is you can start with a splint and just taking the pressure of movement away for a while can um, cause the inflammation to settle down and you can put in a non steroidal anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen and so if the patient can tolerate it. Most times, unfortunately, this doesn't work. You then need to go on to using a steroid in anti-inflammatory in the form of an injection into the area. And the way you inject is approximately an inch proximal to where the radial styloid is, which is just about here. You go about an inch proximal to that, where the first dorsal compartment is, and you put your syringe uh, you put your needle in and you put about a mil of something like triancinolone, which is a fairly commonly used steroid, and that hopefully will sort things out. In a percentage of uh, cases, some say as much as uh, 45 to 50 percent, this does not work, and they need to have an operation where you essentially make a cut in the same area over the first dorsal compartment, release the extensor retinaculum, much like you do for trigger finger 
and then you don't have any stenosis, the inflammation settles down and it works. Why doesn't the injection work sometimes? Well, the reason is, is there's a trick here, which is the first also compartment can in many times be more than one compartment and the extensor pollicis brevis can actually lie deep to a septum which is underneath the first dorsal compartment. So it's like a, like a hidden compartment, if you will. And the problem is when you're putting a steroid in, it doesn't get into there, it's too tight, and it doesn't work. In fact, if you don't know of this, you can do an operation, it still doesn't work. So when you do the operation, always make sure that you look for the septum and make sure that you've released it so that the extensor pollicis brevis has been released as well. Now the operation is somewhat malign because people say you do the operation and it may not work and we've discussed why it may not work. When you release the septum, it works every single time if the diagnosis is obviously correct. The other reason why the operation is somewhat maligned is because people say you can get injuries to the superficial branches of the radial nerve which go just across there. Now these nerves are quite naughty. You stare at them too hard and you will find that they will form a neuroma and be painful. But actually what really happens is when you do the operation, if you're not specifically looking for the nerve and protecting it, you can injure it either by cutting it. And if you get a neuroma in this region, it's very, very painful and intractable pain, very difficult to treat. Or the other way is if you're trying to do the operation too, too small an incision and then you're stretching the nerve by traction when you're using your retractors and that can also cause pain because you get a neuroma and continuity because of the trauma to the nerve. So De Quervins, we've discussed what it is, we've discussed the anatomy, we've discussed the, the treatment protocols uh, and we've discussed what are the pos uh, possible pitfalls and benefits of um, treatment including steroids and of course the operation. So just before we finish, a couple of things really. What was De Quervin's first name, do you think? Ah, his first name was Fritz. That's interesting, isn't it? I quite like to know what people's first names are. I like people to know my first name. And interestingly, what was Finkelstein's first name? Well, Finkelstein was actually called Harry. So now you know most of what I know about um, De Quervin's stenosing tenovaginitis. And that's in a nutshell.